there is nothing more dangerous for my budget than encountering at random a store that sells records. But all the bad things for the better because I found something really interesting concerning Russian propaganda. Let's explore. Hello everyone and welcome to the Freedom Alternative in a very quick video that I will be perfectly honest I hadn't planned for it but um, there's also things that I wanted to show to you before I uh, leave this uh, basement. So uh, after videotaping the clip with V and the clips with V uh, then um, the next day I was supposed to check out from the hotel and meet uh, two longtime fans of this operation and also one uh, person with whom we've been collaborating even since before uh, the Freedom Alternative Network had been in existence. Um, and um, just as I was getting out of the hotel I met this fella uh, so, you know, I stopped by and pat the cat because that's what you're supposed to do, especially if the fella uh, gets uh, with his legs up uh, whenever you pass by. So, after patting the cat, we were heading towards um, a place to eat because uh, I was starving. And then this, uh, I stumbled upon this, basically. So... Um, not only it was uh, so in Yash seeing uh, something written in Hungarian is very rare, obviously, uh, and it was also this. So you know, these two were next to to each other. So I'm like Russian stand-up comedy and Hungarian songs, and I wasn't seeing the part this part that is written in English. I was just seeing <clears throat> this part, right? So Viago Kust Yartung, which means uh, I have walked among the flowers. Uh, no, sorry, we walked among the flowers because ok is for plural. Anyway, so uh, so I was that and I'm like, okay, oh, Hungarian disc. I don't think I have too many of those. So let's see how much it costs. Maybe I get it. And then I see this, Lajos Bosch and his gypsy band. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to buy this just for the cover because definitely something like this, you wouldn't see it being produced in um, contemporaneity. Obviously, there will be uh, quite a... Let's call it a hula baloo uh, over it. Uh, what's even more interesting is that this was a deliberate choice by the person or persons who translated it. So in a way, it was a localizer's <laughs> choice uh, because uh, if I look, if you look here, it has the same text in Hungarian, English, German, and Russian. So you know, in uh, Hungarian, it says just Bosch Lajos Eish Zenekara. So that's well, Lajos Bosch and um, uh, his orchestra. Uh, then in English, Lajos Bosch and his gypsy band. So it says like this. Uh, ah, there you go. In German, Lajos Bosch und seine Kapel. So Kapelle, I guess. So again, nothing about gypsies. And same thing in Russian, Lajos Bosch i Evo Orchestr. So uh, it was a deliberate choice to put gypsy band uh, on the cover. Uh, this was in 1976, so you know, almost 50 years old uh, vinyl, um, in a very good state, in fact, uh, considering that it's almost 50 years old and for just less than $10, I just couldn't resist uh, buying it. But then things got complicated because I'm like, oh, yeah, I gotta have some Soviet era um, stand-up comedy, monologues, whatever. And then there were these uh, Polish discs with French music um, from definitely a bygone era. None of this would be possible to be produced today, especially at this size and with these things. So there's that. Uh, I'm going to make them all available for you in uh, the donor circle. Technically speaking, I think it is illegal to make them available in public. Nevertheless, uh, I just couldn't resist, and there's that. And then it was this uh, 
fella. So, Millennium of Baptism in Russia, right? 1988, uh, sorry, 988 to 1988. Now, what happened in 988? Uh, if you've watched uh, Volodya's podcast with Tucker Carlson, uh, it is this event that he was uh, evoking there. But what uh, draw my eyes to this particular record, in fact, records, because there's two of them, and we're going to start listening to one of them slightly later, is the fact that um, uh, this painting is uh, one pretty known, if you're familiar with uh, the church uh, icons around this part of the world. This painting is called The Baptism of the People of Kiev. <laughs> so, um, so uh, this was the first thing that drew my attention. Second of it, of course, why do you have the baptism of the people of Kiev in Russia in the same, uh, on the same cover? And then, turned it around and Recordings from 1984, and uh, the cover is from 1987. And this particular version of the disc is published in 1991. And it gets better, uh, because, yeah, of course, we're going to listen to it, especially the first one. It's also in a very good state, which surprised me quite a bit, I have to admit. But uh, you have to see it to believe it. So here we go. Ministerstvo Kultury SSSR, the Ministry of Culture of the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. So um, in a time when allegedly the church was being prosecuted by those uh, evil atheist commies, what was happening in reality was that uh, the commies were subsidizing church music. So let's listen to some church music at a low enough volume so the Russian Orthodox Church can't uh, copyright strike my video. <laughs> uh, although I doubt they would care, but um, out of spite they may indeed uh, do it. So. The commies were, I mean, quite literally church commies, uh, because there was a, a discussion in the uh, public group at some point about the existence of church commies. I've shown in the uh, propaganda basement that they are still a thing. They were still a thing back when communism was officially in power. So, <laughs> uh, so there's that. Of course, uh, what's also surprising about this is that. Uh, Usually, commies were a bit uh, uptight about um, publishing things in English. This one has uh, at least a summary of the text uh, in English as well, which is uh, also pretty rare by Soviet standards. And even when they would publish uh, Western content, they would publish it with covers um, in Russian. Uh, so there you go. Uh, published by the Moscow Patriarchy. Now, this is a bit wrong. In fact, the term in English is patriarchate. Uh, but nevertheless, um, props for the effort, I suppose, for the Ministry of Culture of the Soviet Union. So yeah, uh, the baptism of the people of Kiev. And uh, I think one of the songs in on one of these two records is... Uh, also, um, yeah, there you go. So this one, um, Gaspadin Vazvach, uh, which I suppose would be, um, uh, Oh Lord, I cry unto you, or something like that, um, sung in the second tone, minor Kiev chant. So, <laughs> uh, so even in the official propaganda, from the times of the Soviet Union, you already had uh, the um, this intentional uh, conflation, essentially, right? In 988, it's when Christianity arrived in Kiev, in something called Kievian Rus, which, uh, as much as Volodya likes to claim today, was in fact something very different from the Duchy of Muscovy, which is where uh, 
modern Russia draws its origins from. Uh, I, I try to avoid the term modern Russia because there's nothing really modern about Muscovy, but let's say contemporary Russia, right? So contemporary Russia uh, draws its origins from the Duchy of Muscovy and not from uh, Kievian Rus. Uh, although, of course, uh, like any barbarian place, uh, it tries its best to uh, cling its origins from something better. So, you know, Kievian Rus was, uh, for all intents and purposes, a civilization in itself. And not necessarily a stellar one, but definitely superior to the combination of the barbarians of Muscovy and, well, the Golden Horde, the worst of the Golden Horde. So there's that. But yeah, that's basically what I wanted to show to you. This uh, uh, this disc is essentially used, um, I mean, the narrative around and behind this uh, publication from uh, the last days of the Soviet Union is still being used by contemporary Russia uh, as justifications for whatever clusterfuck is Putin doing in Ukraine. So, um, yeah, th this has been around for quite some time. That's why I straight up reject whenever... Um, either paid shills or sometimes people in good faith say, well, mate, but, you know, co contemporary Russia is not the Soviet Union anymore. Well, yes and no. Uh, first of all, contemporary Russia does still fly the flag of the Soviet Union just because they can. And secondly, uh, while it is no longer officially called the Soviet Union, they still use primarily Soviet-driven narratives, whether because they find them convenient or because they no longer have the competence to create new ones. That's a separate debate for another day. So that this is one of the reasons why the existence of this disc is uh, so important, because it gets to show you there is a physical evidence that this shit has been around for much longer than Putin. That's why I refuse this... Uh, copium that oh but you know it's not russia's war it's putin's war and you know most people aren't like that no no because no uh that's one aspect second aspect uh, there will come a time maybe 10 years from now maybe 15 years from now maybe even more uh when you will see some revisionism concerning the um russian orthodox church's collaborationism with the kgb and <clears throat> with the communist regime and with the soviet state uh, where they will try to excuse some of them by saying that, okay, maybe the collaboration wasn't that bad, maybe it wasn't that extensive. So, you know, this is physical evidence that, uh, no, it was. It was that extensive. I mean, don't get me wrong, the Romanian Orthodox Church and the Bulgarian Orthodox Church also collaborated with the communist authorities, uh, sometimes quite um, vigorously. But uh, as far as I know, and I'm looking forward to be proven wrong, but uh, as far as I know, and I know, and I looked uh, quite carefully for this information, there is no official disc with the uh, uh, with the socialist era Ministry of Culture promoting church songs. I just don't think that happened, and especially not promoting the churches as them as buildings and uh, promoting the. A, a distorted view of the Christian legacy of the country. I, I don't think such thing exists either in existed either in Romania or in Bulgaria. And I, I use these two as examples because they're also uh, Orthodox countries. Um, definitely, I don't think there are such things uh, <clears throat> in uh, um, in non-Orthodox ex-communist countries either. Uh, so you know, um, the degree of collaborationism between the church elite and the communist authorities uh, definitely varied uh, and in Russia as evidenced by the existence of this disc definitely erred towards uh, closer to um, total collaborationism I didn't make the rules I just got here and I accidentally found this and I gladly paid 17 18 dollars to get this historical relic into my basement because well who knows maybe some some time in the future it will uh, serve once again as physical evidence for stuff if not well at least it will in, in improve my record collection uh, which is uh, uh, quite big and i want it to be even bigger because well it's my turn to improve it all right that was pretty much it 
Thanks for watching. Send me to the cartels and I'll see you all soon. Cheers.